Hello everyone! Today we are finally refilming the how to crochet a picture blanket video. The last one turned into how to create a picture blanket pattern. I will link that video down below. This is the project that we designed during that video. Today we are using small sections from this blanket to show the tips and tricks that I have found helpful in making one of these blankets. This is the little section that we made during the refilling of this video. As you'll see in the video, all of this is done with variations of single crochet. They're just regular single crochet stitches. It's just transferring colors here and there and all over the place. So without further ado, let's get into it. I have created this base chain for us. This is how I would start a project. Well, it would only be one row because of the border being all the same color. This little section actually comes from right here. I've chained one and now we're starting the new row. So we're starting with two green stitches. And we do the second green stitch. We're not going to finish the stitch like this. We're going to stop with the green yarn at pulling it up, tuck the green working yarn under the end of the crochet hook and around, locking it into place so it is waiting for us when we get back to it in the next round. To start with the black yarn, we pull it through finishing off that last green stitch so that the top part of the next stitch is black, not green, causing a strange color bleed situation. I choose to crochet over the tail and use that as my sufficient attaching of the yarn. To add in the white, we do the same thing we did with the black. We stop before the, the stitch is completed and tuck the yarn under and around, and then grab the white yarn and add it in the same way. I crochet over the tail for about four to five stitches. In my opinion that that is enough to hold the yarn in place and not have it unravel once the whole project is together. Sometimes it, if you start pulling on it at this point that would unravel because there isn't a, a row on top of it also holding it in. So we're going to crochet the rest of the way across my little example piece with the white. When we get to the end we chain one and turn our work. I recommend turning with the same part of the pattern going up each time instead of turning it this way and then this way again. We're going to move up to the next row. So this side, the black yarn is needed earlier than it was needed in the previous row. So we tuck the white yarn under and around and then we bring our black yarn to where we are currently working. Just like in the other rows, you finish that. On this row it is important to remember to crochet over this black strand. If you don't crochet over it, there will be a ring. When you have stretched the yarn to meet where the color block starts, it is important to trap the yarn that is extending the color inside of the stitches so that there isn't a random string hanging off of the project. So we do five black stitches, making sure to crochet over that tail before we tuck the yarn under the tip of the crochet hook and tuck it around and we finish the row using the green yarn and there we have it. So we've added this the yarn and extended this this way and now I'm going to show you how I disconnect strands of yarn. So we're going to chain one and turn our work. Again, remembering to turn it in the same direction so that our strands of yarn remain non-tangled. For this round, we are going to pretend like the black and white yarns are no longer needed. So we're just going to ignore the pattern. Start with two 
green stitches into green stitches. And then when we reach the black, we continue our single crochets, making sure to trap the black working yarn in our stitches. And we'll crochet four to five stitches over the black working yarn. Once we've reached five stitches, we give the black yarn a nice tug to remove any slack that could be hiding under these stitches, which allows the yarn to be more secure. I have not had a problem with blankets unraveling because of ending this way. So even now, if I stretch it pretty hard and pull on it, it doesn't stretch enough to allow that strand to escape. When we go to the white, we do exactly the same, except for it's only three stitches, but I think it's secure enough. In a complete project where the border is all one color, that would help prevent this from unraveling even more. I have the next section pulled up. In this section, I'll be showing you how to carry a color through. So on the pattern, the gray is in the middle of a black section. This is actually the nostril of the zebra. So we're gonna carry the black yarn through in the actual pattern and in the picture it is gray but I do not have gray yarn with us over here. And we'll be using white for the gray. So we're starting with one green stitch and we're going to tuck that yarn under and around and then grab the black yarn and attach. Finishing that first stitch and then starting the first black stitch. And instead of tucking the yarn under and around, we are, content we are going to leave it and tuck it in with the tail as we add the next yarn. So we add white and make sure to trap both this tail and the tails of the black stitch and the white yarn that are being added. So I'll just crochet right over them. We're starting we're, we're starting on row eight where my mouse is. So we do three white stitches trapping the yarn ends in. So here's our three white stitches and then tuck the white yarn under the end of the hook and around. Then we pick up the black again bringing that through to finish the last white stitch and then continue with the black as if the white was never there. We finished out the rest of that row with the black and now we single crochet and turn our work. And now that we're on to the next row, this is row nine where my arrow is, we will crochet with the black until we get to the white slash gray again. Now that we've reached the white, instead of tucking the yarn under and around, we just pick up the white to finish the last black stitch. And then with the white yarn, make sure to trap that black working yarn within the white stitches to tunnel them across. We tuck to the white yarn under and around and then finish the black, finish the row by tucking the black yarn under and around as well and finishing out the row with one last green stitch. So that's how to tunnel colors through other colors when they are needed on either side of the new color that it is being attached. To finish out this example, I am just going to detach the black and white and then we can move on to our next section. The next section will be this section. We will detach the green yarn and we will add the black yarn. So for this section, I am going to crochet one entire row of black to get started. Now we're going to add in another white strand, just like in the first row when we add the strand. We tuck the current working yarn under and around and then pull the new yarn through the remainder of the last stitch and then crochet over the tail, making sure to trap the tail so that we do not have to sew it in later. Now that we've reached the other side, chain one and turn our work. 
in this section, the white is needed for more stitches than it was in the previous row. So we crochet right over the black yarn, making sure to trap the working yarn into the stitches because if we were not to do that and we were just to do the three white stitches into the black stitches, then when we need the black yarn, it's back there and would leave another strange strand. To prevent that problem, we crochet over the working yarn of the black, then give it a nice tug before using the black yarn to prevent the stitches from becoming loose and falling out later. Here is our end of that row. We're going to chain one and turn our work. To complete the last section, I just did one solid row of black across the bottom so that I can show this next part. For this part of the blanket, it is right in here around this section. So we are going to crochet as if this is the row we are crocheting on that my arrow is pointing to. So we are going to do four black stitches. I extend these stitches out to be 10 stitches wide just because that is how wide my little example piece is. We're going to do four black stitches. Now we add in the white strand the same way we have added in all the other new strands of yarn. Now that we've reached the next row, in this row, the whole thing is white, but the black yarn is needed again in the next row. So we crochet across. We're going to crochet this entire row of white, but I don't want to detach the yarn and then reattach it because that is another end that needs to be trapped and held on to so it does not unravel or fall apart or anything terrible. So when we get to that, the yarn where it was used in the previous round, since it will be used in this section of the next round, we need the black yarn again, four stitches from, from the edge of the next round. I hope this is making sense. So this black right here represents this black right here. So we're on this white, white row, and we are, have crocheted six stitches so far, so we're here, and the black will be needed right above in the next round. So instead of cutting it or crocheting over it or anything, we tuck the yarn, just like if we had been using the black yarn, we tuck it under and around, and then continue the white. That does look a little bit funny right now, but in the next row, that will be helpful because we won't have to attach a new strand of working yarn for the black. This black strand that we touched through in the last round, it looks a little funny right now. But when we turn our work, it will be perfectly there waiting for us. So we are now moving on to this row. We start with four white stitches. In this, I do see that there are two black stitches right here. Those are actually the eye, but I am choosing to ignore them and pretend that they are white for this, for our current purposes. We are going to carry the white strand through the black stitches, these black stitches, so that we can have the white on the other side, similar to when we did the nostril section. So we just pick up the black as if it was being used in the previous round because it is on the other side waiting for us, just like if we had tucked it under after using it the previous round. After we've tunneled that white through, we tuck the black under and around and then resume with the white. Now we can see that this is the black from the from this row and then we have the white row. The black yarn, you can see it, but in the long term of the project, it really doesn't matter because in once the full project is there, you really can't see where there's some tunneling, unless you look really closely, like 
Right here, I know I did some tunneling of the black through the white. Now we are doing this row because the black is both needed later and longer than it was in the previous row. So we start with the white and crochet right into the first black stitch. And then we put the white yarn down to be used on the other side of the black and crochet the three black stitches trapping in that white yarn so that it is ready for us on the other side and with the black Something that does not occur in the pattern anytime here, but I think is something good to know, is tunneling the yarn through the use of other colors is possible. You can tunnel a yarn multiple times switching back and forth between each other. So in this case, if we were to do every other stitch white and black, we start with the first white stitch. To finish off the first white stitch, we use the black yarn and then we do that stitch trapping the white in. When we switch back to the white yarn we don't just pick up the white yarn and go straight across because that would leave this tail. We were to just pick up the white strand and the black strand when they are needed and didn't take into account the tails. They look a little bit funny in the back. I don't know how clearly you can see this on camera, but instead of doing it that way, when the color is needed again, make sure to twist the yarns so the black yarn in this case will still trap in that white bit like this, and then finish off that stitch, then move to the next, and the, the backs look much better, and then to switch back to the black, we twist them, then back to the white. Now we twist them back to the black, and so on for the remainder of this row. When we get to the last white stitch, we tuck the yarn under the hook and around, use the black yarn for the last stitch, and turn our work. This will tangle up the yarn a bit, so there is no 100% way to not get tangled. Turning the work the same direction each time should help that at least some. Before we move on to the next scenario, I will crochet straight across in black. For this next section, I will show how to carry the yarn from one color block to another. For this one, we are starting at this bottom row, and we are starting with two black stitches, tucking that working yarn under and around the hook, and then we are going to add in the white yarn and continue the rest of the way across. Now that we have turned our work again, we are going to move on to this second row and or not all the way, we're going to crochet until this black stitch. I have reached the black stitch, so I'm going to tunnel the white through that black stitch, and then we're going to tuck the black under and around to be used in the next row. This black section is complete, but another black section nearby is starting in the next row. That is right here. We do this next row in the same way we would if this whole section was black. We are tunneling this black yarn from the section that ended to the section that is starting. Three white stitches into previously white stitches. And then we twist to the black yarn and then tuck that under and around. This way we didn't have to detach the black yarn and reattach the black yarn because that creates more opportunities for the strands of yarn to unravel. With that scenario coming to an end, 
I am crocheting across one solid black row. In the last section, we did the black being tunneled. The black strand was on this side, so we crocheted this way across this row to get the black to this side. We tunneled it through these three stitches. This time, I am doing it as if we we're crocheting this way across the row. When we go this way, the black is needed over here, but it can't be tunneled because we're not crocheting in this direction. We're starting with eight white stitches, and then we tuck the white under and around, and then use the black yarn which I still had attached from the previous round. And so now we turn our work and we are using the white strands and then we twist it to be using the black strand. So then we do this stitch with the black strand and tuck it under and around and now we have the white yarn again and we finish this part of the row. Now that we've turned our work again, we are now on to this next row. So this fifth stitch in from the side is the stitch that needs to be black. So I have done the four white stitches that precede it and now we take the black yarn from where it has been tucked away and stretch it over to where we need it just like we did in the first section when the yarn was needed earlier than when it was used in the previous section. So then we tuck it under and around and finish out with the white stitches it's making sure to crochet over this strand because we don't want a random little string hanging off of the side of our project. Now that we have moved that black strand to where it is now, for the next row it is right where it needs to be. And so then we just tunnel the white through the black section and the black is exactly where we need it for the new stripe that is starting. And now we just finish out the rest of the row as it is in the pattern. I am going to crochet across the top to finish off the last row of the project. Finish off the project. And now I'll show you how to add on a border. We're going to start over here at the bottom and we're going to use the white yarn to do the border. The bottom and the top are pretty self-explanatory how to add on the border because those are the two flat edges where we started and stopped. So we just have 10 stitches straight across the bottom. You can start with a chainless start or a chain and then single crochet across for the base row. I dabble at doing both. For this project, I just started with a chain. For the corner, I chain one. The corner is always a little bit awkward because I try to thread the hook through one little strand of yarn like this so that it's not into the exact same hole or as the last of the first row to add on to the sides, like the sides are uneven. And that is one of the reasons why I recommend using the same yarn for the border section of the flat project. It makes the edges a little bit more even. For adding the border along the edges, you see how there's a hole here, and then there's one there, and there, and there. So I use the spaces of the project itself or of the single crochet stitches to add on the border. So we crochet into that and like this. And then here's the space. This might be something that is a trial and error type learning curve. I recommend doing the border color the same color as the border that was used during the making of the flat part. Then this stuff won't be able to be seen as clearly and it makes the project look more seamless. For example, when the edges into the green and the black are very obvious, it blends in with the white. On the next round, I would do three single crochets into that corner section. Any type of stitch can be used in the border as long as it is 
within scale. For example, a double crochet border, there are five stitches into each corner. So if I were to start the next round as a double crochet border, rather than doing three single crochets into the corner, I would do five double crochets so that the stitches are to scale. That will help prevent ruffling. I say prevent because no matter what, even if I use the right gauge of needle and yarn for it to be even, I always end up with at least a little bit of ruffling. This is the method of border adding that I prefer and have found, in my opinion, that looks the best. Now that we're almost done with this border, I think we have completed the project, so I'll see you in the outro. And just like that, we're done. This is the little project that I made during the filming of this video. I hope the scenarios that I demonstrated during this video are helpful for you to be able to create a picture blanket. If there's any other further information that I can provide, let me know. I really hope that this video is helpful for creating a picture blanket or quote blanket or whatever because I really find them enjoyable to make and I love how personal you can make the gift if you're going to gift it to someone. They're not very hard to do in terms of the actual techniques. They are just very 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 time consuming and you have to be able to differentiate between colors that are very similar. Happy crocheting and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!